Here is Tesla again. Here is the whole dynamic of the trade, right? So here is the 457. Here is the 468 and the stock of the Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let, I want to start off uh, with a very, very important area that we are kind of faced with today. So if you've been watching this broadcast and you've been hearing me moaning and groaning about why Beta hasn't participated in this run, well, now there's a flip side to that, okay? Uh, you know, we, we felt that at any given point, there's going to be a lot of money flow uh, that eventually is going to hit the market and all these beta names are going to wake up. Now, they kind of did, right? Uh, Tesla, and we'll get to that in a second, had one of the biggest runs um, I can remember in a very, very long time. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, today's other big news, the biggest school system uh, in the world, which is New York, New York City, is uh, closing down schools, which obviously led to a huge afternoon run uh, in the stay-at-home stocks, especially Zoom. If you take a look at Zoom, for example, uh, this was literally from, you know, this was literally from, from what, from 2 o'clock, right? So 2 o'clock, they closed down the schools, its stock literally went from like 393 uh, to 420, huge. But again, if you look and you've been paying attention to kind of the price action uh, for the last like week or so, right? And you hear me complaining about, hey, just these stocks are not participating. Like what's going on? Well, now we're at the point that we are technically faced with, well, a, a, you know, kind of a, a line in the sand. And if you look at the queues and where they close today, you'll see why. Again, if you're watching this broadcast today, for the very first time, again, I believe that technical analysis is, is, is not a, it's not a debate, okay? Uh, technically, when stocks trade and they trade organically and start confirming levels, usually that directional bias will take place. And again, when you have a combination of stocks just not rallying, okay, into a full-blown aggressive market rally, despite the cues, right? Despite the cues been putting in, you know, higher highs and higher lows now for seven consecutive days, when you look at something like that, and you have your first close today below not only the five-day moving average, but the 10-day moving average, this is a huge red flag, okay? And, and again, it's very, very easy to turn around and say, what's the big deal today is just profit-taking, but just keep this in mind. If stocks couldn't go up with the rest of the market, like your Amazons of the world, your Apples of the world, your Facebooks of the world, so forth and so on, right? If they didn't go up with the rest of the market, well, what do you think is going to happen if the market starts pulling in? And this is kind of where we are, right? This is where we are right deep in the sand. If you believe in the theory that the five-day moving average is acting like the shortest term sentiment, and oh, by the way, we closed below the five and the 10-day moving average, which I believe is the birth of the trade, there's a lot of sell buys going into tomorrow's session. Now, again, you know, nobody's turning around start, you know, saying, as soon as you see this broadcast, sell everything, sell everything, sell everything. But what I'm saying is, if we start confirming today's price action and the bottom of this range falls, we're going to have a lot of room to the downside. Okay, this is all it is. And again, if you believe this, the theory of stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, then you have a realistic view of where the market could go from this 290 level all the way down to this 285 level and still be on a really big, massive uptrend. So I think tomorrow's session is going to be uh, very, very important. I, I, again, it's just technical analysis is the most important part. Again, I have an opinion, you have an opinion, but technically, if things get damaged and they start confirming previous day's channels, right? Usually things are going to follow uh, for the price action wide. Uh, for what we saw today was, again, another stalemate for the, for the uh, Dow, excuse me, for the um, NASDAQ stocks. You saw a big reversal today in the Dow. And again, for the Dow, it's really not that much of a big deal because if you look at the diamonds, it, you can make a case that, again, we are resting, but look where the diamonds closed, right? Look where the Dow closed. You had, you had one, excuse me, more than that. You had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You had 12 days in a row closing above the five-day moving average. This is the first close today below the five-day moving average. So again, guys, if you're going into tomorrow's session and you are bullish, 
you better hope your stocks are really taking out aggressive levels because you have the Dow below the five, the Q's below the five, the SPX is a little bit different, right? SPX closed below the five, but it's still above the 10. So if the SPX start losing, let's just call it 3560, right? If the SPX starts losing 3560, then again, look how much room, you have all the room all the way down to 3502. So it's pretty, pretty important tomorrow. Again, if you, if you are a believer of the bull market, well, tomorrow's day, the bulls better step up, but there's going to be uh, a pretty aggressive rug pull. And again, if you're an investor and your time horizon is, you know, a year, two years, six months, then again, obviously it doesn't apply to you. If you're an active uh, intraday trader and you trade the, the, the upside, you trade the downside, then these levels are something you're gonna want to uh, pay attention to. If you look in NVIDIA, uh, they came out with earnings. Uh, we actually had a really aggressive pivot this morning uh, in NVIDIA, but again, stock beat numbers, but again, got really, really sold off uh, after the close. The big story of the day today, in, in my opinion, and you, and you see why the options market really dictates what happened. So Tesla got upgraded today, okay? And they got upgraded today from Morgan Stanley. I think it was like a $540 price target. I, I, be, I believe so. I don't even remember. Such a long, long day. And it gapped up, but it gapped up so lethargically. It was up like seven, eight points after yesterday's kind of decline, all day decline of the S&P. So we had a couple of levels in mind if the stock would actually get strong and have a one day later reaction. So we knew about the after hours high yesterday of roughly 467 and a half, 468. We knew about this range here, which is roughly, let's just call it 457. Everybody see that, right? 456 and a half, 45605, 45630, 45675. So you kind of get the picture. So it really needed to get above 460, uh, 4, uh, 457. And then you had the next level of interest roughly around the 468 area. And you just started seeing, and again, guys, this is where I really encourage, especially for all you guys who are, are, are traders and you trade these stocks, get yourself an option scanner. Like I personally use Flow Algo. Uh, it's pretty good. There's, there's a bunch of them. Uh, trade Alerts is really good. Uh, Cheddar is pretty decent. Uh, Flow Algo, it, it, they're all comparable. But get yourself an option scanner. Even if, you're, if, even if you do not trade uh, options, like I'm not an options trader, okay? But I use the order flow to correlate with my pivot. So if I'm sitting there and I'm looking and I say, wow, 468 is a really, really big area here after this range here, you know, and I start seeing 475 weeklies, 500 weeklies, 510 weeklies, 520 weeklies, 550 weeklies. Some guy went out and bet $1.2 million on the six, I forgot which ones it was. I think it was the 615 or the 625 calls for January. You know, again, it's like literally holding, it's like literally holding aces. And when the options market correlates with the pivot, you're going to get a really, really great reaction. And uh, again, you know, it, it, can it have a res day tomorrow? It could. But, you know, those guys that were betting, you know, really serious money, uh, especially for the weekly calls, you saw those 500s like rolling off the shelves, like it was panic buying off the 500. So a uh, really, really aggressive day there. Um, I, I thought the action today was pretty good. Again, a lot of names that probably we wouldn't trade. But now that we are getting a correlated technical view, especially in the NASDAQ 100, hey, you know, it's pretty safe to say I think tomorrow we're going to get a lot of premium uh, on the downside if these things start to confirm. Again, remember, this is just a thesis. Again, technically, everything needs to confirm today's channel. So if we, you know, if we gap up tomorrow and we have a gap and go and go higher, again, remember, you could be wrong. Again, I'm wrong all the time. You could be wrong as much as possible, theoretically. Just don't be stubborn enough to forecast the trade to go in early that you're wrong financially. Let everything confirm. Believe me, these stocks are not going to run from, run from you. If you believe that the Qs can lose the bottom range, right the bottom of this five and ten day range look how much room you have you have six seven dollars worth of downside do you really need to be perfect or rush into this entry probably not so again the thesis for tomorrow i definitely like the market to confirm if they don't obviously we could flip around and look to the upside uh so it's very very important and again i, I would love to see a gap up tomorrow only because if the market does gap up and they get and these stocks that i'm watching for tomorrow get sold into supply right those are the greatest days because they get stuffed into supply, they go green to red, and once they confirm the previous day's lows, which were today, that's going to start a pretty good waterfall effect. So again, my game plan for tomorrow, obviously, uh, is probably 70-30, 80-20 uh, sell bias. But again, you know, we trade both sides of the market. It doesn't really matter. So uh, let's talk about the pivots today. 
Uh, very, very aggressive. Okay, uh, really, really aggressive pivots today. Uh, this first pivot, I actually, well, I don't want to say I screwed it up. So I get short, uh, I get short um, zoom on the second, uh, second, uh, second entry, and it goes down to like 391. The pivot was 394, so it went down to like 391, 50s, 60s. Bounced around a little bit, went down to 390. I didn't make any covers, okay? I didn't make any covers because I, I really thought it was going to get down to like 85, 75. Because if you look at the daily chart, you'll see what I mean, right? So I got short here, right? Got short here. So I thought it was going to get down to like 386 and then maybe 375. It never did that, okay? So I actually wound up, instead of making money on the trade, I wound, actually wound up losing 60, 70 cents. Really, it's really not here or there. It's pretty much a break-even trade. But the point is I gave it every opportunity, and it would have been nice if we would have just had that one flush uh, into the rise in support. We'll get to, to Zoom in a second. Obviously, a uh, big runner this afternoon. This was a massive move. They they knew, right? They they absolutely knew uh, what was going to happen with NVIDIA after earnings because you should have seen the selling pressure uh, in the video this morning, uh, 536 held three times in the 60 minute. If it builds below, can flush. 532 is also going to be macro support. Look what they did in the video this morning. Just absolutely destroyed it, right? Check this out. So here was the whole channel, right? This was the whole channel right here. Here's, oh, excuse me, this whole five. Everybody see this 536, 536, 536, 536, 536. It takes out 536, takes out 532, and goes all the way down to 527. Huge move on the video for all you guys have caught a great job uh, there. Uh, Roku, you know, Roku just gave a dollar move, nothing big. Again, here's another perfect example uh, of the market just not embracing uh, many stocks when they're coming out of ranges. Uh, 189 on Square, never got close. RL, I, I wasn't even watching. What did RL do today? I wasn't even watching. Uh, we talked about 84 and a half, 85. Uh, it looks like it went to 85 and change. Nothing, nothing there in RL. Uh, net, I don't think net did anything. I don't believe it confirmed. Uh, no, traded right to, I, I liked it at 67, traded 66.86. Uh, never got there. Chewy, again, once the news started breaking uh, on these stay-at-home stocks, they all woke up. Again, Zoom put up a like a $27 candle. Uh, Chewy broke out pretty nicely. Again, they do uh, pet delivery, pet supply delivery. We use uh, Chewy all the time. Phenomenal company. Uh, 6530 needs to build. And once you started seeing the stay-at-home stocks wake up, this is a stay-at-home play. And here is the play here. Here's the 6530, right? Here's the 6530 daily. And stock traded all the way up to 67. I still like it tomorrow if it follows through. Uh, Qualcomm, you know, nice move on Qualcomm before everything got pulled. The 150 needs to build on Qualcomm. Uh, here was Qualcomm, right? It took out the 150 and went to uh, 153 and change. So really nice move there. And then uh, they obviously pulled it with everything else. Uh, FUBU I scratched on. Um, I bought FUBU at 23. It went up like 20 cents. It just sat there, sat there, sat there. You know, how long are you going to sit there? So I wound up scratching, went up like 50 cents. You know, I blew it a little bit and then ran that. And when, and then again, the stock got killed. Uh, TTD never got to this area of, of support, uh, of uh, confirmation. Uh, you know, for all you guys who did take, take profits on this train, I didn't. I screwed this up. Uh, so NVIDIA got murdered. Um, so Zoom. Again, destroyed here. Uh, this is towards the end of the day. Facebook 273, if it builds below, can flush. Here is Facebook. And again, setting up for tomorrow. So here's a 73. You can see it. Not a big move yet, but it's it's if the market confirms, it's going to go lower. So 73.10 was low here. 73 was low here. 73.29 was low here. So once it started building below 73, uh, closed you know under 72. First move is 70 and then 68 uh, for more continuation for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and this was, you know, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, again, guys, congratulations for all you guys uh, who in this trade, who are still in this trade, who still have uh, calls uh, in this trade. Um, th this thing looks amazing, absolutely amazing. And again, here's the key, right? This stock is so hated. There's so much short interest in the stock. The problem is all these indexes that are that are, um, that are uh, coveting the S&P 500, they have to be uh, long the stock, I believe, by... Um, December 21st. So there's a lot of selling pressure. So people can't, you know, it, it, shorts got triggered, um, you know, buy-ins got, I mean, there's so much, there was so much going on today, but once those buyers came in, it was just, just euphoria. It, it was, at one point, it put in a $27 candle without a downtick. It was unbelievable. Uh, Tesla 457 needs to build. Here is Tesla again. Here is the whole dynamic of the trade. 
right? So here was the 457, here is the 468, and the stock went to 497. Just an absolute killer move. Again, guys, congratulations for all you guys who caught that. Uh, Highland 2630 needs to build. Uh, not a big move, you know, not a big move on Highland. Uh, traded to what? Uh, the 2680s, not, nothing a big move before it relaxed. Uh, and it went down, uh, yeah, 26, I said 2690, it went to 2684. Um, yeah, so again, so here's kind of the step I tell you, 462 is supply, 468, huge area, yada, yada, yada. And the next thing you know, again, weekly call buyers coming in, December 500s coming in. And basically there was nothing left to say. Oh my God, right? There was basically nothing left to say. So uh, crazy move, right? Crazy, crazy move. Uh, again, uh, going into tomorrow, again, I have to be sell buys based on what I'm seeing uh, on the charts. Uh, you had a huge reversal also on Boeing. Boeing was a big, big uh, added weight for that move uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, but now, you know, now we're looking at a different game. So tomorrow, guys, get your, you know, go through charts, see what's sitting on uh, rising five and 10 day supports. And if they start confirming, you know, you're going to have uh, lower prices. Guys, have a great night, everybody. I wish you all the best. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.